In this video, we're going to take you on a tour of our new property and show you what we fell in love with and some of the ideas that we have. And we're going to start right now. What's going on YouTube Gardening? It's your boy Sydney from the Naked Gardener channel. Wait a minute, we're no longer just gardeners, we're homesteaders. So one of the reasons why we decided to buy a lot of property because we basically outgrown our waiting room, our classroom as Jess from Roots and Refuge would say. And we wanted to grow more stuff and basically be more self-sufficient and self-sustainable. So we found this property and it was just so much stuff that we could do on here. What we probably do on this first area we're going to show you is where Mrs. Naked Gardener is going to probably have her flower slash herb garden. And it's right off the road. What we'll probably have to do is add some sound barriers, probably put some... Um, some trees or some brushes so that way when you have the cars passing by like that it will kind of buff out the tone of the uh, vehicles passing by one of our first priorities was to have this internet post installed for obvious reasons we need it to be able to get online and be able to upload our videos so as you can see it got kind of a little bit warm I had to take off my hoodie uh, now that we're going to possibly have the garden right there, I want to possibly build a cattle panel greenhouse probably right about here so that way Mrs. Naked Gardener can start her starts of her flowers and her herbs right here. And then possibly uh, somewhere right here, probably put a lean-to uh, to store our, our garden tool area. Uh, so that way we'll be able to keep them be readily accessible when we're coming out through here to start playing in the garden. And since this uh, shop slash garage here has a gutter system, uh, I want to probably do some type of water catchment system to help feed off uh, and water the garden or whatever possibly things that we need to do. Maybe even clean off our tools, wash, wash off some of the plants and whatnot that we're harvesting and uh, that way we provide a nice flow system uh, for this area. So here we have a building structure that the previous owner had ascertained from the neighbor. It's a nice shed, it's in pretty good conditions. The trusses and everything is pretty good the poles are in pretty good condition uh, what we probably have to do is regrade some of the flooring in here and then we could possibly start housing some uh animals in here as well I'm not sure what we're going to do maybe even just put just our feed up in here this first time coming in here decide to house some of our uh, livestock feed or fertilizer or whatever seeds whatever we will possibly need to reskin the outside structure of this as you can see there's some holes and cracks where possible rodents could come in and try to uh, eat some of that maybe even tidy up some of the openings so that way there won't be any predators or rodents coming in and um, harming our feed. Ah, ah, ah. 
So when I came out to look at this property the first time, I learned that there was a storm shelter. It wasn't listed on the property because it's old, it's dilapidated, and honestly, it's pretty creepy. Uh, it, it is something that they just deemed unsafe, but I wanna show you how cool and creepy this thing is because if there is a tornado, I'm gonna make sure this is cleared out for us to have a place to hide. Sage. Are you gonna come with me? Come here. Come here. Come check this out. You, you can be my guide. Let me see how far I'm willing to go. What? Oh! Sage said, Mama's going. <laughs> I'm gonna follow her. Oh well. I'm not gonna stand up. Don't stand up, I said. I'm not. So this is our little storage shelter, and it is as creepy as I thought. I mean, there's a bunch of dirt dauber, cave stuff in here, but Sage is pretty interested in it. Come on, buddy. Thanks for having my back, buddy. Something I really love about this property is this tree. I want to have one of those fancy disc swings because I can see myself swinging right here. So here we have the other uh, barn structure that we have. Now on this barn structure, there is a concave roof right here in the middle that kind of bows in. And then there's no gutters here. So when we do get some rain, the rain just happened to have a nice downspore right here and it caused a little muddy muck right here. So that's something that we want to kind of fix on that. Uh, we're going to take a look inside and then we'll show you the outside structure that I'm really happy about. So here, I think once we get our our goats, we could possibly house them inside of this structure. I uh, would we'll possibly want to add them more off of that side. Uh, and I'll show you why later on, but right around here, it looks like we may have some roof damage all through the, uh, some of the spots of the areas. And I noticed right here, we had a nice down pour rain, I think it was Friday. Mm -hmm. And so it's been about three days now and it's still wet right here. So it's probably some roof uh, leaks probably coming from there or from the back side. I would like to kind of regrade all of this, get it nice and level. Uh, the owners, the sellers, had this di ditch witch that they, did, they didn't leave. It just didn't work. There's some missing pieces on here that needs to be uh, fixed before they pull it out. Uh, I'm not mechanically inclined, but I wish it was a simple fix that we could possibly do and they could leave it here for us to fix it and use because there's uh, endless possibilities uh, for a ditch witch on a homestead. So now we're on the outside of the barn here and it has this already like a gate pen area. Now for us to possibly put our goats in here, I would like to build a door access right here so that way uh, we can allow the goats to come in and out of here be a nice place for them to graze or feed and play around and stuff and the good thing about this property is we have two pecan trees uh, one's on the back side uh, right here in back of me and then we have two uh, where our neighbors have but the it kind of uh, over uh, flows of our fence line so that way when the pecan drop we it be on our property so that'd be nice and then we have a young uh, tree that still has time to grow uh, we was talking with Jason from the Big Bear homestead and he was uh, was asking him would it be best to kind of put our uh, hogs once we get some hogs to allow them to graze underneath those trees so that way they can eat up the uh, pecans that we don't uh, gather around and stuff and then put them around our fruit trees to kind of finish them off there he thought that was a good idea so we might try to possibly do that 
So the owners have this uh, empty tub basin that we have right here. And I was thinking about possibly using it as a huge worm farm uh, catchment system. What's y'all thoughts about this? What do you think we should use this uh, empty tub for? Comment down below. It's the entryway. I want to see you try to open the gate. Also good because then they can't bang their way out, mm -hmm. and you're always pressing them back. You think this might be a good spot to do water catchment for those animals? Yeah. Like we can get one of those larger... Like those 3,000 gallon yeah. water catchment systems. Look like they had some power. They did. There's electrical outlets inside of that barn, but it connects to that property uh, oh, that they purchased and they shut it. That, that's the one he said they shut yeah, off. Yeah, so we would have to set it up for ourselves. Oh, okay. So one thing we enjoyed about this property is already pretty much fenced in and on the back 40 of our property we had uh, our backside neighbors. They have a about a good size herd of cows. It's probably about a good 20, 25 of cows back here. And Mrs. Necky Garda came up to this uh, fence earlier this morning and was trying to get in, in good encounters with them. So something that I have fallen in love with in the morning is to grab my coffee and I can watch the cows. This morning they were at this fence, like right up with their head over it. And I wanted to come out and pet them, but I, like grass is really high. Until we can get a mower to cut, like I'm not gonna be comfortable to come up and pet them. I was hoping they would come up and say hi, but they are tired. Now the good thing about this property, it already had a fence line, so uh, that's one less infrastructure that we have to uh, worry about. The back side of this one corner area, the owners, uh, previous owners were going to redo a fence line. Uh, they were going to take down some of these trees that was invading the fence line, messing them up. However, I guess it was some type of dispute. Uh, so there is a empty area where we're going to have to uh, possibly redo the fence line. So the seller told us that they have this mostly wheat and they have the Mennonites come and uh, chop it down and bale it up and haul it off for whatever reason. So maybe we can get with them and do like a, a barter deal where they can do the same thing since we don't have a baler and store some of the hay uh, into our one of our barns for once we get our livestock for them to feed on or use that as one of their bedding. So what I would like to use this strip of pasture for is kind of like a Joe Salatin crop rotation. Uh, have a permaculture type design where you're not basically killing off the soil, allowing the soil to rest in between the seasons. Have the pigs come in here feed off of some of the cover crops, some of the hay, then having the chickens come in right behind them. 
and uh, pick off some of the manures of the maggots and stuff like that scratch into the uh, surface to kind of spread some of that pig manure into the ground that way we can allow the field to feed our livestock while our livestock fertilize the land and it'll be a good permaculture design hopefully what y'all think about that comment down below and let us know what y'all would do with something like this with addition to having already infrastructure of a fence line already in place it was nice that the previous sellers had uh, this gate already here so that way uh, I would like to possibly when we're calling in for some a heavy load of mulch or some compost or some soil they we all be nice to have open this gate up have them to dump it out at a certain location so the benefit of having this gate here it will allow us to not have any ruts in front of our house and have it at a more controlled area before we show you where we plan to put our vegetable garden i want to point out that this area right here mr naked gardener is considering to put in a large hoop house greenhouse right in this location because of where the sun hits during the day so that's going to be something that we're going to be planning out over the next year so one of the things that feels like a blessing is we discovered that we have a pear tree located right here. The first time we came out to the property, it had tons of flowering blooms on it. And then the second time we came out, it already started to develop some fruit. And it happens to be the tree that one of our daughters wanted us to plant on the property. We are having a little bit of a dilemma because this area that we're standing in is an area that we want to put our vegetable garden, but there is an old shed that's a little run down that we need to consider tearing down for us to have the space that we want for our garden. So one of my ideas that I want to do with our garden for this location, since we have the sun rising from this location and going over off of this location, uh, I kind of want to have a 50 by 50 foot uh, fenced in garden bed area for us to start growing our own food. This would possibly be just for us to uh, harvest for our own household and uh, possibly later on doing a fruit guild over by the pond which will take you over. For us to make this happen, we're going to have to move this uh, shed that's in back of me. Uh, it's pretty much run down and it's going to be in the way uh, going to be kind of off put so that's one of the things that we're going to have to do so one of the things that we are really considering in our planning is we have this pond and this pond has a path that goes out and basically naturally waters a certain area of our property and I'm going to just kind of show you how it travels here mind you there's a nice hill here this water trail goes all the way up to the road in this section and it also intersects the area that I want to have my herb and flower farm garden area. This elevated hill area around the pond is where I love to walk in the morning with my coffee to watch the cows. So this is the second gym that we have on this property. And this is Mrs. Naked Gardener's favorite. It's a persimmon tree. And the good thing while doing this, uh, we found at the base of this tree, a lot of persimmon seeds. So we talked to Big Bear at the Big Bear Homestead. And he was saying, try propagating these, see if we can grow these. If they do grow, possibly selling it. So if you're interested, about having some persimmon trees comment down below with hashtag persimmon tree so we just noticed that with these seeds that there's already some trying to germinate on its own 
right here. So Big Bear Homestead told us to go ahead and try growing from seed because there might be a market for that here. I'm starting, I'm seeing as I'm digging along here, all of these seeds that are actually germinating. Uh, so we might have a little persimmon opportunity to start some of these trees and which happen to be my favorite. I just want to be able to identify what type of persimmon tree this is before proceeding. One of our ideas uh, for this property is have a permaculture fruit guild so that way basically every type of plant is going to be in companion and compatible with another plant. Uh, we would like to possibly do one of our fruit guilds out here. And since we already have a fruit tree and a pear tree, I uh, would like to do a peach tree and maybe an apple tree along with some other shaded trees out here. So that way once the fall season comes, we can start using some of those leaves as compost ideas or as mulch around the uh, guilds here. Uh, what are y'all thoughts? What type of things should we add on here? So I've been watching a few channels and doing some research on finding out what plants go with hand in hand with our fruit guild that we're wanting to implement on our property. Stuff like artichokes, uh, rhubarb, uh, hostas, uh, just basically big leafy plants so that way when you use your chop and drop you can use that as a nitrogen fixer into the ground along with other shade tolerant bush berry plants and the deterrence from other insects and pollinators attraction plants so pay attention to some of our future videos as we start incorporating those in our fruit guild so mr naked gardener brought the idea of permaculture guilds to me and i only got more and more interested as i learned that we could grow stuff that we actually could use so it's not only stuff that's going to be feeding these trees and that's going to be nutritional for them but it's going to be stuff like asparagus that we are actually going to be able to eat and have to at our table and comfrey which has medicinal purposes and plantains there's certain plants that are going to be used to feed these that also are going to be feeding us and have us working less and not having to do as much fertilizing so the best part about this property for what Mrs. Naked Gardener was looking for is this pond. Now this pond is roughly about a 4,000 surface area square foot of uh, water and it's been about 16 to 18 feet deep. And from what the seller was saying that it's never ran dry out of the 20, 30 years that they've been onto this property. So that's a good plus. Now we've noticed that there's been like small fishes and uh, toads in here from what they were saying. I think they said they have what a, a pike fish? Pike, pike fish. Pike yeah. fish in here. A good thing about this being a water source is it's going to be when we're adding our pigs and our ducks possibly on here. That way they'll have some way to come in here and to cool off, play in, and be able to hone off from there. I really like the idea of us expanding the biodiversity for their, this property that we have and we are newbies when it comes to this when it comes to this pond and animals and how they may interrupt the ecosystem uh, and we have to figure out and learn and we may be asking you guys for advice on how we need to balance this out uh, personally i would really like you know my little dreams are to have catfish and some bass i don't even know if that's appropriate for the size of the pond that we have so this is stuff that we have to learn and you guys can watch us mess up i guess so comment down below and let us know what you would do if you had something like this so one of the first most important investments that i made was from tractor supply these boots now i was going to go ahead and invest in some expensive $130 muck boots that I've heard a lot of good things about but I feel like this isn't my territory that I'm used to so I need to kind of ease my way into figuring out what I need 
those of you that live this life and know what works for you please comment down below give a girl some advice on what things I need for my feet uh, equipment preferences that you have brands that you have because I need all the help I can get well we hope you like this tour if so make sure you give us a thumbs up it really helps our channel out now we got some other videos we'll put on the i cards above so that way you can follow along until the next video let's grow together